What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a lot to talk about from what's going on with altcoins, a few of them that are looking very bullish in particular, to what's going on with Bitcoin, the overall market, regulators, and a lot more. But before we dive into that, it still says about 70% of you watching are not subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy short form, concise, no BS content that doesn't waste either of our times, we'll make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, Patreon is still completely sold out. We added 500 new spots about two days ago. We've sold out of those. But in the meantime, um, make sure to join our free Discord using the link down below. We talk about stocks, crypto, and I'm in there all the time answering questions. Anyways, right now, the entire crypto market is relatively flat. After seeing Bitcoin have its massive rally from $45,000 per coin to $55,000 per coin, we are starting to see it take a little bit of a breather, consolidate a bit. Many people have been asking me and talking about in the Discord, why are altcoins not moving? We have seen over the last couple days that Bitcoin's price is up nearly 30%, but many altcoins like Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, XRP have not moved very much. The reason for this is, is that typically altcoins Bitcoins lag behind Bitcoin. We usually see Bitcoin's price rise first. And then when people are more optimistic, feeling a little bit more um, positive about crypto, they allocate some of their Bitcoin over to altcoins. So right now we're still in that phase where people are a little bit hesitant about getting into altcoins, but now is the best opportunity to be buying. Well, things that I've been looking at in particular are things like Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, um, Uniswap, Avalanche, Chainlink, and a lot more. But right now is the time to be getting in before we see Bitcoin's price break through record highs. Before we see altcoins start to rally, we always see this phase where they are a little bit stagnant, they're lagging behind Bitcoin, and we're not seeing as much money being poured into them. So this is just something to keep an eye out on because yesterday we saw Bitcoin's price up 10%, but almost every single altcoin in the top 10 was in the red. This is nothing unusual. We are just have to be patient and wait and accumulate before we would see a massive breakout happen. With regards to technical indicators and a couple of macro indicators, for the crypto market. First is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Right now, we're seeing the Crypto Fear and Greed Index at around 76. This is important because this is showing extreme greed in the market when just one week ago, we were in the 20 range, which was extreme fear. We have seen a complete flip in the overall sentiment of the market. And the interesting thing here is I overlaid the charts of the Crypto Fear and Greed Index over the last year and Bitcoin's price over the last year. And every time we see the Crypto Fear and Greed Index get above 65 or 70, that is a sign that we are seeing massive accumulation, massive price increases and entering a bull market for crypto. Whenever we could see it, you could see this entire time, whenever we have seen over the last year, Bitcoin's price rallying higher, crypto fear and greed is going to be well above 65. And we're seeing the exact same thing happen right now. This is what the crypto fear and greed index shows. When things are doing well, people are more optimistic, they're more willing to buy. So seeing this massive spike in the last week, for the Crypto Fear and Greed Index going from about 20 to 76 shows me that we are definitely in a bull market. Definitely want to get into some of these altcoins that you may have been a little bit hesitant or on the sidelines about over the last couple of weeks. Next story is going to be with a top analyst from Bloomberg. Mike McGlone, um, Bloomberg's one of their top analysts, came out and said that they're viewing $50,000 per coin for Bitcoin right now as a key support. Previously, it has acted as a key resistance over the last couple of months, but now that we've broken above it, he says that this is going to be a key support moving into Q4 of 2021 as we continue to see more institutions get into crypto, as we potentially see a Bitcoin ETF getting approved. This is going to be a key support support moving forward and is one of the many reasons why people are very bullish on crypto. Next story is going to be with mass adoption. Bank of America, crypto they just debuted their crypto research team. And according to one of their studies, they came out and said that if you look at the number of corporations that have mentioned cryptocurrency in their earnings call, we've seen a over almost 10x increase from last year. Last year, there's only 17 corporations that mentioned crypto in their earnings call. This year, in the most recent quarter, 147 corporations talked about crypto. So if that doesn't get you excited about investing in Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, 
I don't know what will because having that much of an increase from institutional invest institutions mentioning crypto is very exciting, meaning they're going to start investing more. They're going to start implementing more um, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency um, technology into their business. This gets me very excited. Not only this, but in terms of mass adoption, we're also seeing that the U.S.'s fifth largest bank called U.S. Bank just launched a Bitcoin custody service, which essentially is going to allow investment managers, hedge funds, to store their private keys for Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. They're going to look into help store private keys for other cryptocurrencies down the road. But right now, those are the ones that they're offering. And again, this is a sign that they've been getting a lot of demand for um, cryptocurrency services. Last couple of things I want to go over are with technical indicators. Right now, when we look at this tweet from TechDev, you can see if you overlay the 2017 and 2021 charts in terms of Fibonacci levels and stack them right on top of each other, they are nearly identical. Back in 2017, during the bull rally and bull market, we saw that we had a low and reached about that 1.272 uh, Fibonacci level in mid to late July, July 17th in 2017 and July 21st in 2021. Now we're seeing it follow the exact same pattern. In addition to this, we're also seeing very similar things happen from 2013 to 2021. In 2013, we also reached the 1.272 Fibonacci level in about June, and we reached that same level in 2021, uh, in July, and we also are seeing the same thing happen in July of 2021. So if you look at 2013, 2017, 2021, we're seeing nearly the exact same things happen in terms of technical indicators with RSI, with Fibonacci levels, and in terms of price movements in general. So we've talked about a lot of these in the past with RSI, Fibonacci levels, but this is very interesting to see. We're continuing to see more mass adoption take place, continuing to see some people get into crypto that previously have not gone into crypto, even like the Soros Fund um, management, their family office, just got into Bitcoin as well. So we're continuing to see more mass adoption. That's what's going on with crypto. Very exciting stuff. Great time to get into some of the altcoins you may have held out on for a while. But that's what's going on. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you guys.